where is the pushback against this, all of this talk? The pushback is coming from uh, mainstream Australians who, who, who absolutely lambasted Adam Bant for refusing to have the flag behind him in, during the press conferences. The, the pushback comes every year when Australians turn out, all Australians turn out to celebrate Australia Day on the 26th of January. Um, it's it's, it's uh, a, a constant um, pushback against the woke elite and, and as I mentioned, the inner city elite who, who suddenly decide on the 26th of January that it's Invasion Day. In general, every year, Australians are proud to be Australian. Every time we do a poll at the IPA, overwhelmingly, it shows that Australians are proud of their history and proud of Australia and proud to celebrate Australia Day. It'd be nice to get a politician, though, into the ring to articulate that, wouldn't it? It really would, but, um, but I think our politicians are too, too scared of uh, being cancelled. It's actually got to a point now where many of our politicians are too scared to say that they're proud to be Australian, which is a very, very sad state of affairs. Reparations paid to Indigenous Australians. What for? Uh, well, there is um, the, 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 for being on stolen land um, and for stolen generations. This is uh, um, actually happening in Victoria at the moment. Um, each member of the, 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 the stolen generation is given $100,000 by the Victorian government. Um, and there's a similar scheme in, in New South Wales at the moment. And, and I think um, you can safely say that following this kind of logic, we're going to have to get to a stage where all Indigenous Australians are paid some kind of reparations for, uh, for the presence of non-Indigenous Australians on the land. This is, where, this is where this narrative is going. Yes, I mean, taxpayers are paying 30 billion, B for billion a year, to quote unquote, close the gap. Why would you want to close the gap if you get 30 billion a year for keeping it open. That's a, that's a very good point. It's not in, it's not in the uh, interest of the activists to close the gap. They need the gap to justify their existence. Many Indigenous Australians though, Bella, are perfectly happy working alongside you and me and other Australians earning a quid and paying taxes. Who speaks for them? Well, Jacinta, Jacinta Price speaks for yes, them. Yes, she does. Um, and um, that, but that is the sad fact that I can only name one or two. Warren Mundine speaks for them. But, you know, there's, it's a handful of um, Australians in this country who do speak for those Indigenous Australians um, every year, especially when in, uh, Australia Day comes around. And yeah. they really don't care about what the day is Australia Day is celebrated on. The, the real disease, though, Bella, is that this wokeness is everywhere, isn't it? It's in politics. It's in business, in the media. So as you said, woke inner city councils refused to hold their citizenship ceremonies for new citizens on our national holiday. And then you made the point that statues deemed as white oppressors are graffitied and vandalised. And we come to Captain James Cook, accused of racism and genocide. Where do they get that from? Uh, they get that from the uh, history courses that the are being classroom. taught at school. They get that yeah. from the classroom and the lecture theatre, unfortunately. And the Rugby Football Union, that's England. They call themselves the Rugby Football Union, that's England. And Rugby Australia, they're playing test matches out here, have decided to rename the Cook Cup. Now, I should say to you, uh, Bill, I coached Mark Eller. I have no difficulty with him. He's one of the most gifted players, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, the country has ever seen. But as you say, Cook is one of the most remarkable figures in our recent history, and wokeness completely misrepresents his role. Well, yes, look, the point, um, Alan, is that if you leave a vacuum, so for example, in the national curriculum and schools and universities, they're not teaching anything about Captain Cook. So there's a big gap. And that gap is being filled by myth, by a historical myth. And that myth is that Captain Cook was a racist and a coloniser and, you know, um, represented British imperialism and genocide. And that's the myth that Rugby Australia has, has adopted. But it's adopted this, this narrative not because people are upset or there, there was a general sort of um, a movement amongst the people because they were upset that it was called Captain, it was called the Cook Cup. It's sheer virtue signaling. They think that they're appealing to, um, to some element of society by changing the name, but whereas they're actually alienating rugby followers, they're, they're right. alienating sports fans.